Miranda, a 25-year-old office worker, met her husband Gabriel, who was two years older, while attending university. They first encountered each other at a university event, where Gabriel was immediately smitten. After developing a deep connection, the couple began dating and five years later they got married, excited for their future together. However, Miranda could never have predicted that just three months after their wedding, their relationship would fall apart due to her mother-in-law's intrusive and toxic behavior. Gabriel's mother, who lived alone just 30 minutes away from their apartment, had initially seemed harmless. At 50 years old, she was independent and energetic. But Miranda soon realized that her independence meant she felt free to show up at their apartment unannounced every weekend. Each visit brought relentless criticism. Whether it was how Miranda kept the house or the fact that she still held on to her job, Gabriel's mother had something to say. You call that cleaning? When are you going to quit your job and become a proper housewife? She would demand. Her obsession with having a grandchild only made things worse. If you can't give me a grandchild, you should get a divorce. I can find someone better for my son. Miranda felt completely overwhelmed not only by the constant scrutiny, but by the complete lack of support from Gabriel. He would often laugh at his mother's remarks or, even worse, join in. Miranda was stunned to realize that the man she had married was more of a mama's boy than she had ever known. One visit stood out to her. Gabriel's mother arrived and immediately ordered Miranda to cook for her, despite the uninvited nature of her visit. Miranda threw together some pasta with the ingredients they had on hand only to be met with more criticism. Is this all you can make? Her mother-in-law sneered. When I was your age, I was always prepared. You never know when my husband might come home with friends. You should learn to keep a proper kitchen. Miranda, trying to maintain her composure, apologized as her mother-in-law continued her tirade. To her surprise, Gabriel agreed, saying, She's right. We should be more prepared next time. Even though just days earlier, they had agreed not to overstock their groceries. The next day, Gabriel returned home with bags of unnecessary groceries, following his mother's advice without a second thought. Miranda was frustrated beyond words. Can't you make your own decisions? She wanted to scream, but instead, she simply began preparing meals with the excess ingredients, including making Gabriel lunch every day. Though he would thank her for the lunches, she was growing increasingly resentful that he couldn't see how unfair it was for her to shoulder the bulk of their household responsibilities while also working full-time. As Miranda's patience with the situation waned, things took a shocking turn. One day, she received a message from her mother-in-law, accusing her of infidelity. I saw you walking with a man, she wrote, confused and panicked. Miranda tried to explain that the man her mother-in-law had seen was her brother, someone she had met with recently. But her mother-in-law refused to listen, escalating the situation further by threatening to move into their apartment. If you don't let me move in, I'll make sure you and Gabriel get divorced, she threatened. Though Miranda tried to dismiss her mother-in-law's baseless accusations, she couldn't shake the feeling that her marriage was slipping away. When she returned home that evening, Gabriel was already there looking serious. His silence and the look in his eyes suggested that things were about to get even worse. This confrontation, combined with his continued failure to support her, ultimately led Miranda to question whether their marriage could survive the constant interference and manipulation from his mother. I came home early one evening, only to be greeted by Gabriel sitting in the living room. There was something cold in the air, something I couldn't quite place. You're home early, I said cautiously, trying to break the tension. Cut the small talk. Sit down, he snapped, his voice icy and distant. My heart raced. I knew something was off, but I tried to keep my composure. Oh, wow. So she already told you about that, huh? I said, attempting to ease into the conversation. Whatever you heard from your mom, it's just a misunderstanding. Before I could finish... Gabriel shoved a stack of papers in front of me. Divorce papers? Wait, what? What is this? I asked, completely taken aback. You thought I wasn't going to go through with this, he retorted, anger flashing in his eyes. That's how much you hurt me. I'm going back to my mom's. 
So take some time to reflect on yourself and decide what you want to do. He paused, his tone hardening. I'm open to working on this if you're sorry and admit your faults completely. But if you're falling for someone else, just sign the papers. If you don't, I'll be filing a lawsuit against you. I was stunned by his words. Gabriel had clearly bought into his mother's lies without even bothering to hear my side. He waved those divorce papers in front of me like some kind of victory, utterly convinced he was in the right. As much as I wanted to scream, I simply kept my calm and pretended to look remorseful. Gabriel mistook my silence for guilt. I'm not trying to be mean, he said, his voice softening. I'll give you two to three days to think about this. He left, feeling triumphant. But I knew better. I had already made up my mind that I was done with this relationship long, before he ever showed me those papers. Gabriel had never been supportive, especially not when I told him about my recent promotion at work. In fact, he seemed threatened by it. His ego had taken a hit, knowing I now made more money than he did. Now he thought he had the upper hand. As soon as Gabriel walked out the door, I picked up my phone and called my brother. He was on summer break from university, and I knew I could count on him. I texted him, asterisk, I need you and your friend's help. Food's on me, asterisk, happy to help, he replied almost immediately. I took the next day off work. With my brother and his friends by my side, we packed up all of Gabriel's belongings, every single thing. Once everything was boxed up, we delivered it straight to his mother's house. No explanation needed. Then, I went straight to the courthouse and submitted the divorce papers. Afterward, my brother and I celebrated with a nice meal. It felt like a weight had been lifted off my shoulders. The next morning, I wasted no time. I went to a real estate agency and found a great apartment. It was perfect, fresh start, new space. Just for me. I signed the lease immediately, packed up my own things, and arranged to move in as soon as possible. That afternoon, Gabriel called. His voice had that same arrogant tone I'd come to despise. So, have you had a chance to reflect on yourself? He asked smugly. Yeah, I replied calmly. I gave it some thought. I also submitted the papers and sent all your stuff to your mom's. There was a long pause on the other end of the line. Wait, what? What are you doing? This is our house, he stammered, clearly flustered. You must have forgotten, I said, keeping my voice steady. You were squatting in my apartment. Gabriel was speechless for a moment. Well, that's true, but he tried to argue, but he was stumbling over his words now, realizing I wasn't bluffing. I'll never forgive you for this. I'm going to file a lawsuit. You will regret this, he shouted, his voice rising with frustration. I interrupted him before he could continue. So... You believe everything your mom says, huh? Did you even bother looking at the photo properly? There was silence on the other end of the call. Photo, he asked, sounding genuinely confused. I forwarded him the photo his mother had sent him, the one that supposedly showed me with another man. There was a pause. Then I heard him gasp. What the? Yeah. I said, cutting him off. That's my brother. Gabriel was stunned. Wait, what? I didn't know. I told your mom several times, but of course, she never believed me. So, no, I never cheated, and no, you don't have a lawsuit against me. Gabriel was at a loss for words. Wait, we don't have to get divorced if you never cheated. I didn't mean it like that. He tried to backtrack, but it was too late. You think we can just move on after everything you've done? I asked, disbelief and anger creeping into my voice. You only listened to your mom. You never bothered to hear me out. You went so far as to sign divorce papers without even speaking to me first. I can't spend the rest of my life with someone like that. Gabriel tried to protest, but I cut him off again. Go ahead, live with your mom. You're a mama's boy anyway. I hung up the phone, blocking his number. He continued to call and text me, showing up at my door and ringing the bell incessantly. But I was already gone. I had moved out, leaving no trace behind. Later, my landlord told me Gabriel had been roaming around the building, yelling at my door. Eventually, 
Someone called the cops, and they took him away. That's when my landlord informed him that the homeowner had already moved out. Gabriel's face, apparently, turned blue with shock. He hadn't seen any of this coming, but he deserved it. I don't regret a thing. I returned to my life as a single woman quickly, and honestly, I'm glad to have left behind a mama's boy and his manipulative mother.